In this question, we're asked to sketch on the same arc and diagram the locus of points satisfying a, the mod of z minus 3 plus 2i is equal to 4, and b, the arc of z minus 1 is equal to minus pi by 4. We're told the complex number z satisfies both mod of z minus 3 plus 2i equals 4, and arg of z minus 1 is equal to minus pi by 4. It says given that z is equal to a plus ib, where a and b are real numbers, in part c we need to find the exact value of a and the exact value of b. OK, we should recognise this one as a circle, centre 3, negative 2, radius 4. We should recognise this one as a half line, starting on the real axis at the point 1, creating an angle of minus pi by 4. In previous videos, we've seen that 1 is not included in the locus. OK, so we need to sketch this up. Um, I think I'm going to graph it. I'll let you sketch it. I'm going to graph it to ensure that I'm being accurate. Any time I've got a circle on here, I prefer just to put it through a calculator. So let's start off with this one. We can have a circle 3, negative 2, radius of 4. So let's do that. Let's grab that up. Let's grab a circle. So let's find 3, negative 2. That looks about there. And then we'll get now a circle, and that is going to have a radius of 4. So that's our first locus. And we would need to label this up. I can't label it up as I can't write on here, but we would have to put the centre. And you might want to put some dotted lines to show now the radius. So you might want to put a dotted line and then simply label it up now that this is the R, uh, sorry, the mod of z minus 3 plus 2i is equal to 4. OK, so let's now draw our half line. We're going to start on the real axis at 1 and create an angle of minus pi by 4. So let's grab a line and again, make sure you're labelling this up. So let's start at 1. Remember, 1's not included, and this is going to give us now an angle of minus pi by 4. An angle of minus pi by 4 gives us a gradient of 1, so we will be going through the centre of that circle. So let's grab that up. And this will continue down here. It's just I'm not going to go off the screen with it. And again, we would need to show that this point on the real axis is 1, 0, and this is an angle now of pi by 4. So do make sure you've got those on. So this is what we're going to look, uh, look like, essentially. OK, so that bit's done. So what we need to now do is find the complex number z that satisfies both of these. Now, if we look at this, we can see quite clearly we've got part of a line. We can see that that's defined for x values greater than 1, and it's going to kick out negative y values. What we're going to do is use a simultaneous equation after converting them into Cartesian form to find this point here. Our simultaneous equation will lead to a solution here, but remember x has got to be greater than 1 and y has got to be negative. So let's write this one now in Cartesian form. Writing in Cartesian form, we can see that this is going to be x minus 3 all squared plus y plus 2 all squared is equal to radius squared, which is 16. Often an error is that people leave that simply as 4. Remember, if that's a radius, a radius squared is going to give us 16. OK, if you want to look at an informal approach to this, this is going to be part of line. And remember, it is part of a line. And we're going to start at the point 1, 0, and we've got a gradient of minus 1. So if you want to look at it informally, that's one approach. Alternatively, we could rewrite z as x plus iy and simply now do arg of x minus 1 plus iy is equal to minus pi by 4, and then go ahead and remove the argument. So removing the argument, we can have y over x minus 1 is equal to tan of minus, so let's write this in, tan of minus pi by 4. Tan of minus pi by 4 is one of our special angles, and that gives us minus 1. So we can write y over x minus 1 is equal to minus 1. And rewriting our Cartesian equation is going to be part of a line 1 minus x. And remember, we know that x is going to be greater than 1. So that's what we've got. So if we label this one up equation 1, and we label this one up equation 2, we've got simultaneous equations. So I'm going to solve a simultaneous equation and simply find this point right here. So let's do that then. I'm going to sub uh, 2 into 1. So what we're going to have, equation 1, we'll have x minus 3 all squared plus. So what's y? y is 1 minus x, so this is going to be 3 minus x all squared is equal to 16. You can expand that out. Um, alternatively, we could just write x minus 3 all squared plus and then minus 1 squared and then x 
minus 3 squared is equal to 16. Depending on how you want to see it algebraically, so we'd have now two lots of x minus 3, all squared is equal to 16. Dividing both sides by 2 and square rooting, we can see x minus 3 will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 8, which is going to give me 2 root 2. So what we've got then is x will be equal to 3 plus or minus 2 root 2. We can say that x, let's write it here, x greater now than 1, therefore we're going to have 3 plus, uh, so let's write there, therefore we will have x will be equal to 3 plus 2 root 2. You can state from, instead of writing x is greater than 1, because if we took x less than 1, we would get this one right here, and that would be the value here of uh, 3 minus 2 root 2. You can put from argon diagram, okay? So if you want to write from argon diagram instead of defining x to be greater than 1, from argon diagram. Okay, so that's done. Now, so we can see that this right here is going to be the value of x. And this is going to be forming part of our complex number z in the form a plus ib. We know that y is equal to 1 minus x. So all we'll do now is say that y is equal to 1 minus, and then what we've got then is 3 plus 2 root 2. So all we do from here, let's rewrite that. What we can have minus 2 minus 2 root 2. So here is our y value. So putting this in the form a plus ib, we can see that a is going to be now 3 plus 2 root 2 plus now our b value. And I'm going to write this in a few different ways you can write this. Minus 2 minus 2 root 2 i. So here is our complex number z and we can simply leave it in this form right now. So you might want to say z is equal to this or you might want to say that a is going to be uh, 3 plus 2 root 2 and then b is going to be minus 2 minus 2 root 2. So if you want to put z is equal to this and then put these entirely up to you, I'm, I'm sure in terms of the answer that you're expected to give in the exam, there are different approaches that you can do. So there we go. Um, just some few points. Remember to label this up. Remember to show that's for the value of, my, uh, of pi by 4. And then just do show that. A nice way of showing that the radius is 4 is to draw a dotted line across here and then a dotted line across here just to show that. Alternatively, you could put a dotted line on and show that radius is 4. So all done. Bit of algebraic manipulation. Again, you decide how you're going to tell the examiner that you know you're taking the positive uh, 2 root 2. And from there, it's fairly straightforward.